everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my next installment in my 100 Years of Makeup for Pale Skin series. We're actually over the halfway point now, which is very exciting. I've got another four videos after this one to go. Today we're doing 1970s and this was probably actually my hardest decade yet because I was so unsure about what kind of look I wanted to do because the 1970s was extremely diverse. First of all, the sort of mod styling of the 60s did continue a little bit into the 70s. Um, we also had the very very natural sort of no makeup makeup of the hippie era coming through and we saw the rise of disco and punk rock happen in the 1970s so you've got this you know extremely glittery evening sort of looks of the disco era and then these extreme you know punk rock makeup was like a completely its own thing because my 1960s look was quite bold and my 1980s look I think will also be pretty bold I decided to do quite a natural look for the 1970s something that emulated the the sort of tones and the colors um, hence why I'm wearing my sort of most 1970s colored outfit thing that I own But I wanted to do something that used a lot of those soft sort of colors bronzy skin um, I've even got some faux freckles going on as well to emulate that slightly more sort of Sun-kissed look that they had as I've said in plenty of my other videos These are not meant to be like 100% accurate tutorials of makeup from the era I like to call them historically informed makeup tutorials So I take a lot of inspiration by doing quite a bit of research, looking at all the different trends, the products they used, and then coming up with something that fits my more modern aesthetic that is inspired by that era. So this for me is something that I would absolutely wear out. In fact, I'm going to go out right now wearing my makeup like this. This actually turned out to be a really beautiful sort of everyday makeup look. So if you are curious to see how I got this look, then just keep watching. So I'm gonna start out with a primer. I'm using my current favorite primer. I only got this a few days ago. But I've used it every single day and I'm blown away by how amazing it is. I can't believe I haven't tried it any sooner. It's the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. You will have heard heaps about this online. It's the perfect amount of siliconiness so it helps to smooth out your skin but it makes your makeup last so well. So definitely believe the hype with this one. I think it's worth the investment. So for my skin, I'm gonna go with a foundation that's quite uh, lightweight and sort of skin-like looking. It's almost kind of like a serum foundation. It's by this Australian brand called Australis. I tend to try and work with international brands if I can so that like all of you can get it, but I do believe that Australis does ship internationally even though it's an Australian company. And then this is their Liquid Elixir Serum Foundation. It's oil-free and paraben-free and it has vitamin E in it. And this is in the shade Neutral N10. So this is their lighter shade. And what I love about this foundation is that it is actually really natural looking. You can build it up a wee bit, but it's going to give you kind of a nice sort of light to medium coverage. And I like to use a beauty blender to blend that in. So I tend to just sort of dot it around my face and blend it in as I go. But what we're wanting to achieve is quite a skin-like finish that so doesn't really look like I'm wearing foundation because we're going for that sort of natural everyday sort of hippie look. <laughs> it's extremely like liquidy in texture as you can see it's kind of just like running down my skin. So now I'm going to add a little bit of concealer. I'm going to use two concealers. I'm going to start with my Too Faced Born This Way concealer and apply that under my eyes. And then I'm just going to cover up a little bit of my acne scarring with my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Chantilly. Just because that foundation was such a light coverage, it's, there's no way it was going to be able to cover some of this scarring. So, Also just going to run a little bit of that down my nose, just to cover up some of that extra redness that's peeking through. Then I'm just going to go in and set my face using the Kat Von D Translucent Powder. So I'll start by going under the eyes and then I'm just going to use this bigger powder brush to kind of set, just lightly set the rest of my face. So the 1970s really did celebrate a tanned complexion. Obviously I'm trying to do these decade videos um, for pale skin specifically, um, but I will be doing quite a bit of bronzing today just to kind of emulate that really bronzy, natural, sort of sun-kissed skin that they had in the 1970s. They weren't quite aware of the dangers of the UV rays as of yet. So I'm gonna use my Bare Minerals Invisible Bronze. This is in the shade Fair to Light and a really large powder brush. And I'm just going to sort of apply this in big sweeping circles around my face. 
just where the sun would naturally hit, so on the top of my hairline. And right over the tops of my sort of cheekbones, almost applying it like a large blush brush. I will put a little bit on my neck as well, because my neck's like a little bit lighter than my chest, just to make that kind of all blend in. This is such a great bronzer if you've got fair skin, because it really is quite subtle. It's really hard to make a mistake with it. Um, you're not going to look muddy and it's got quite a nice sort of glow to it so it looks really natural and healthy and then for blush we're going to go in with something really really neutral and again kind of bronzy in tone i'm using the essence matte touch blush in the shade rose me up 30 which is a little bit more tan than i would say rose but um definitely more of a blush color than a bronzer i'm going to use my serap beauty blush brush and just apply this sort of where we applied the bronzer really it's just to kind of intensify that part of the face but this has a really nice sort of natural tone to it now for highlight I'm gonna go in with something really really natural I'm using my EXO Beauty radiant glow highlighting powder and at first I'm gonna take a big brush that same powder brush I used to apply the Kat Von D and just put a little bit on that and apply that almost as a finishing powder right over the whole face. This is just going to help to give the skin a really nice sort of overall glow. This is such a subtle highlighter that like you don't need to worry, you're not going to look like a disco ball applying this all over your face but you could also use like an hourglass ambient lining powder or something as well. And then I'm going to take that same product and a smaller brush so a true like highlighting brush and I'm just going to build up some of that glow a little bit more on some of the high points of my face. This is a like probably my most subtle highlighter that I own. So it's really not going to look like I've like overly highlighted my skin. It's just going to give a really pretty healthy glow. To finish my face I'm going to just set it all to get rid of that powdery look because as I say I'm trying to emulate quite a natural skin finish. I'm going to use my Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 setting spray. This stuff really helps to melt the powder into your skin. It's really, really great. So I like to give it a bit of a shake first, and then you do have to do quite a few sprays. You'll, you'll feel very moist. <laughs> and I'm just going to air that off and let it dry completely. I like to do it before I do my eye makeup because it is, as I say, quite a dewy spray, and I find that if I've done my eye makeup, I end up with a lot of mascara and stuff all on my under eye. So I prefer to sort of set my face and give it a couple of minutes to sort of dry down. So moving on to brows, I'm going to use my Benefit Cabrow in the shade 02. What I noticed with brows is that they weren't the feature of the makeup, so they were kept fairly natural, um, although plucked a little bit thinner than perhaps they've been in previous decades. So I'm just going to fill mine in quite sort of naturally. Um, I'm not going to make them too sharp or anything, but I'm definitely going to fill them in a bit just to define but try and do it in a way that looks really natural, so with like little strokes. And then I'm just going to set them with my Gimme Brow in shade 1, which is quite a light colour. Those colours quite like match my natural hair colour really well. For eyes, I'm going to use this designer brand's palette. This is the All Eyes On You 16 shade eyeshadow palette. Looks a little bit like... Another kind of palette we know. <laughs> so I'm going to go in with this nice sort of matte, sort of a matte soft peachy shade. Not going to do anything too crazy on the eyes. But pretty much using this to just sort of contour the eye just to shape it a little bit, but I want everything to look quite natural. Just also going to run a bit of that colour underneath the eye. Might use this mirror. I actually think I might um, put that on the lid as well so it'll just be kind of like one colour but blended out. I'm not really going to use the palette to its full extent because we're just going to use one colour but um, it's a really nice tone. I wanted something that kind of emulated the rusty natural tones of this dress. However this palette does have a really fantastic teal, which they would have gone for a colour like that all over the lid as a single colour look as well, if they were doing something kind of more evening-y, uh, or like for the disco kind of styling. 
Then I'm just going to apply a little bit of pencil liner. I'm using my Zoeva Graphic Eyes, the usual one I use. And I'm just going to just softly define the lash line, like really subtly. Um, and use my pencil brush to diffuse that. For my lower border line, I'm just going to brighten my eyes a little bit with some of this Chi Chi Eye Brightener. Don't want to use anything too bright. I wouldn't go in with white. I'd just leave it if you don't have a nude. The lashes definitely didn't have the same sort of attention that they had in the 60s, so I'm going to go in with a slightly more natural, less volumizing mascara. I'm using my Benefit Roller Lash. This mascara is just a lot less sort of thickening than my Lancome Monsieur Big, which I've been using a lot lately. It creates really nice sort of fluttery natural lashes. I'm just going to define my lower lashes as well, but I'm just going to apply this mascara quite sparingly. It's just my little duo mascara from Mecca Max. It's mainly just to colour the lashes. I'm not going to apply it quite as heavily as I did in my 1960s look. Because I'm doing a bit of a modern sort of representation of the 1970s, I'm going to add some lashes. Um, but you could totally leave it like this. This would make a beautiful just everyday makeup tutorial. I'm going to add some very fluttery um, wispy lashes. These are the Miranda lashes from Glam by Manicare. So I'm going to go in and add a few faux freckles just to kind of emulate that really natural um, sun-kissed look to the skin. So I'm going to use my Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. This is in shade 2. You want to use like different amounts of pressure so you don't end up with like all of the same colour. And if you find that they get a little dark, you can just soften them out with your beauty blender. So you kind of have to commit when you're doing faux freckles, you have to kind of commit and do quite a few if you want it to look natural. Your beauty blender will be your best friend here. Hopefully you can see them in the camera. They're showing up really nicely in real life but they are quite subtle. I didn't want to overdo them so if they're not showing up much on camera, just believe me that they're there in real life but if I did them any stronger they'd look quite unnatural. Now for lips, I'm going to go in with a gloss because I loved glosses in the 1970s. So I'm going in with my Too Faced Lip Injection Glossy. This is a really nice sort of natural peachy colour. Oh yeah, the shade is Babe Alert. So that is my modern take on my fresh face sort of 1970s glowy bronzy makeup look. If you did enjoy it then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you missed my 1960s look I will link that up here for you as well as my last vlog for you to watch. You can subscribe by clicking on my face down here and until next time thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!